Hey, it's me, the Christine. I'm a boy from Alabama, and I now live in the Pacific Northwest. This is my first time doing a YouTube vlog, so it's new for me, and it's new for you. Before we get started, I need to clean up. So much better. Now, today we're getting to know each other. We're going to share a little bit, and we're going to try some new things and talk about some old things. As many of you will come to know, I have a few hobbies outside of what I do as a performer and choreographer. Um, I'm fascinated by the drag queen world, performance, and I also work a lot in pageants. So to help make this video a little more adventurous, I'm going to go through a special adventure. That is the world of fake nails. Um, now this is very popular with a lot of beauty um, influencers online. I want you to know that I'm none of the above. I know very little about anything, but I'm going to share with you what works for me and I'm going to try new things that might work for you and we'll just do some of it for fun. So today I'm having my first experience with having long fingernails. I'm going to do actual fake nails. We're starting with glue. We're going to get through this quickly. I went to Sally Beauty Supply. When I say I went to visit Sally, I don't mean my mother-in-law. Um, I went to just explore and see what fun things I could do that would um, be a good time for people to watch. And I saw fake nails and a lot of my drag queens friend, friends have to experience this every week. And I thought, I want to give it a go and see what it's like. So I found some matte blue nails, which I'm going to put on myself now for the first time ever. They're like a baby blue color. And then there's actually an additional nail that's like a marble print, like a coffin nail. I wanted to go for like extreme, but it's a first try. So apparently you have to like cut the end off of this glue to get started. And while we're doing that, we're gonna talk a little bit about life. Um, I've seen this done before, so I kind of know what happens, but I'm not an expert at it. Put a little bit of glue on a nail, as I'm doing right now. This could be a total disaster. And if you are someone who knows about beauty or fashion and you're watching and judging right now, don't bother emailing, calling, tweeting, judging, because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm figuring it out as I go. If you have tips, now that's a different story. But I'm just kind of rolling with the punches and taking some dares from friends and some challenges from other people and seeing what works and what's fun. Oh my gosh, this glue dries super, super fast. So I have one, two on. Oh my God, this looks like my mom's hands. Oh, that one's sideways. Um, we're gonna see how this turns out. I'm just pushing a little bit of glue. My Instagram is the Christine. My tweet is the Christine. If you see something I'm doing wrong, feel free to share. Just don't cast any judgment. Pretty sure at this point I have a wrong nail on a wrong finger somewhere, but we're gonna figure that out as we go. Um, I'm just laying them on now. Glue, nails, sticking, going. As I said in the beginning, just a boy from Alabama. I uh, grew up, went to University of Alabama, worked in theater, um, lived in New York City for a while, then moved to Florida, and now my life and experiences and changes have brought me here to the beautiful Pacific Northwest and one hand of complete coffin nails. Oh my gosh, okay, maybe I'm better at this than I thought I was going to be. Now here's the real sitch. What happens, first of all, when you have to do the other hand and you have full nails? I can't leave the house tomorrow because of my nails. Um, oh, so we're gonna figure this. <laughs> oh my, God. my nail's literally like, okay, this is getting worse at this point because now my fingers are sticking to each other and the nail, the nails no longer stick. Oh my God, it's on the ground. I want to talk about some current events that are going on again. Oh, and it's stuck to the nail. I want to talk about some current events that are going on um, in life, in pop culture, and see how everybody else feels about it. Uh, and talk about some life experiences. Today's a really important day to me. It's my little sister's birthday. Today is also the six year anniversary of the date that I appeared as a guest coach on ABC's The Bachelorette, which we're gonna talk about just a little bit later. So as we finish this little project up, next project is gonna be something that's really special to me. Um, a lot of friends have seen photos of me and my friends, weddings, events that we've gone to. And a lot of girls have asked me, like for my boyfriend, I want my boyfriend to look great in photos. We're getting started now. Things to talk about, so many ideas. Um, but I want to start out with a makeover for guys. Now this is not makeup to look like a drag queen. This is not makeup to look crazy. This is makeup that you can wear every day or every evening. If you know you're going out with your girlfriend, your wife, or your boyfriend, or whoever, and you want to have amazing... 
I'm stuck together pictures, then this is what you do in four easy steps. One, two, three, three, four easy steps. The first step is moisturizer. You gotta use a moisturizer. Now I use basic drugstore Aveeno moisturizer. I'm not endorsing any brands because I don't represent any brand, but Aveeno works for me. It's amazing and I put on two coats. So you put on one coat, you let it dry completely, you put on the second coat a few minutes later. The first coat fills in all the dry spots. The second coat is the one that builds a layer of protection against your skin from the makeup so you don't break out. So we're starting now in four easy steps. After the moisturizer, there's only three. See what I'm doing here? Oh, I can't. Excuse me for a second. I feel a visceral. Moisturizer, we're moving on to the next step, which is boy makeup, and we're gonna talk a little about my biggest pop culture moment of the day. So let's move on. All right, so the nails have had time to dry. You know what, on second thought, I'm not that disappointed. Not bad for a first try, they're not perfect. I definitely have some of the wrong nails on the wrong fingers. I definitely have some angling going on, but this just goes to show you for anyone who's afraid, give it a try. Now, if I had the budget to, I'd have someone professionally do them and I'd look amazing like all the other people I can't stop. It changes your whole life once you see yourself like this, uh, like the other people who are influencers. But for now, it's good. And it also matches my shirt, so I'm happy. I have like a baby blue color with a marble pinky nail, which is still kind of like boyish. But I'm going to rock this the rest of the week and get opinions. And everyone who asks me about my nails, I'm going to tell them to come look at this video. You know, the first step I told you is to moisturize. The next part that you're going to do is a concealer. And a concealer is just to help us look young and youthful. Let me get my hair out of the way um, and I use a basic concealer I don't use a lot of expensive stuff I use drugstore stuff because I'm not a beauty influencer although I'm happy to take suggestions um, I started out using my finger literally my fingertip to touch in and like rub stuff in now that I'm a little more advanced I've been in it I have a beauty blender of my own my beauty blender is great you just wet it a little bit squeeze it I have a um, actually right now I'm using a Mary Kay sample that someone gave us Mary Kay right there um, for a concealer, it's a little bit different in this lighting, but you just dab some on and you basically want to cover up anything that doesn't look like your normal skin. So my normal skin's right here. It looks pretty and clear. I'm lucky that I have nice clean skin, but I go under the eyes. I'm going to lean in a little bit closer, go under the eyes and dab it in, put it under there. I'm, this is, I'm used to doing this in a mirror, which is just kind of like a mirror, but not. And then you just take it and blend it down and this gets rid of dark circles under the eyes. Rub it down. And then for me, since I'm a little bit older, I put on my eyelids as well, because you can see veins and stuff. Rub it down and rub it down until you can't really tell anything's there, but you can already see this side's a little bit brighter than the other side. And take it into the corners of the eye. It just keeps you from looking tired under your eyes, especially if you're doing wedding photos. I'm gonna show you some pictures from my wedding. The boys look fierce. We get comments all the time. Why does everyone look so amazing? Are they all models? The answer is yes, they're all models. They're all performers, but I allowed time in the timeline for everyone to come to the honeymoon suite, and I did everyone's makeup in my entire wedding because I wanted everyone to look great. Now, something else you can do, boys, you want to rub it like around the corners of your nose where there's redness. You want to take it down so that everything looks nice and clean. So it's going to look a little bit white because I use a shade that's a little bit lighter than my normal skin. Blend it in, and then I also go on my forehead right here where it's a little red, and if you have any spots like discoloration, acne, anything like that, just kind of dab it in, rub those spots out, and then you're gonna let it dry. So you take a minute, grab a cocktail, have a beer. You're feeling a little bit nervous about your manlyhood at this point. You're scared because your girlfriend's putting makeup on you. It's your first time. Don't be scared, we're gonna be okay. Let's talk about something else as we're letting that dry. Taylor Swift's new video dropped today, oh, dead dead to the world so amazing as soon as i heard the lyrics a few days ago i was like wow so she's it's called um you need to calm down which is a play on the phrase that men use to women a lot of times to tell them they don't need to be emotional you need to calm down so the first verse is just a recognition of haters on the internet who are constantly telling everyone including taylor swift that they you know need to stop doing what they're doing and believe their beliefs the second verse goes into a whole thing and recognition of Pride Month, which is amazing. And in my recognition, I have to shout out to Cornelius Carter, who was a dance teacher who discovered me at University of Alabama many years ago, who was a pioneer um, in the LGBT dance world. 
By the time I graduated from University of Alabama, my senior year, I won Senior of the Year, which was unheard of that not only a dance major, uh, but an openly gay young man would win the Alumni Award at University of Alabama. So I won that. Within weeks, he won U.S. Professor of the Year against um, mathematicians, Harvard professors, amazing people. He was chosen as U.S. Professor of the Year in the same year that I won uh, the Alumni Student Award. So we ended up going to Washington, D.C. together. I got to speak at the National Press Club and introduce him as the U.S. Professor of the Year. So it was groundbreaking. And let me tell you, that was over a decade ago. So with what's happening now, he's my shout out to uh, LGBT role models um, for today. In a state like Alabama, a small boy from Alabama, that was happening to me. And I'm so grateful for him and so happy that that happened. With that being said, now we have things like Taylor Swift. You know, people don't like it. She's being political finally for the first time ever. But you have to give people a chance. When you come out, it takes you how many years? A decade, 19 years, 23 years, 45 years for you to have the courage to come out. So when you come out to your families, you have to give them time. They have to have their own time to process and to be there. And you can't expect them to rush just like you didn't rush. And the same thing applies to people like politicians, celebrities who have their evolution once they meet someone famous and once they've been around people who are in the LGBTQ community, your perspective changes. And uh, one of my longtime friends, Todrick Hall, became friends with Taylor Swift. And this is not the reason why. She's had her own evolution, her own story, and I'm not here to tell it. But they've become really close and they share a lot of life experiences. They're supportive to each other. And I'm extremely proud of him. I'm not name dropping. I'm just saying this is an example of how people can change and how life can change. And she's never been outspoken about politics or, you know, controversial issues. But now that she's become so close with him, once it becomes part of your life, inevitably you can't deny it. And so she has decided it's her time to speak up. So this video, so amazing, so amazing. Um, you need to calm down. The second verse alone has so many celebrities, the Fab Five, Ellen DeGeneres, Billy Porter. Todrick's there playing her best friend as he does in real life. It's just incredible, the representation that's in this video, along with a whole cast of RuPaul's Drag Race, which is another thing that we'll discuss. If you have favorite shows, I love Housewives, hence my glorious setting here, which will change every week. We'll talk about that later. Um, the Bachelorette, we'll talk about that next. Pop culture challenges the world. It also takes us away from the hard things that we're facing every day. And I believe in it, and I don't believe in disparaging the Kardashians and people like that because they're part of what relieves us from the hardness of reality. So while you're letting that set, take it in. If you haven't seen it yet, please go watch Taylor Swift's You Need to Calm Down, executive produced and also co-starring my friend, Todrick Hall, who I'm so extremely proud of for being who he was today, the same person he was 15 years ago when I met him. Do that and let's move on to step two to making yourself beautiful boy glam but this as they say in the beauty world this is a l'oreal true match the color that i use is sun beige yeah and you can use you have to get it matched you can get help take a friend with you take a girlfriend with you take your wife with you take whoever you need for boys um but it's just a match that you just take and i apply it everywhere on my face and i use one brush the whole time i'm working one single brush and look the nails aren't even a problem. Oh, I'm going to do Dolly Parton later, t -t 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 9 to 5. Um, so I take this powder and just start applying it all over to make sure I'm covering up all the spots to make sure I'm not shiny. On that note, I'm talking about topic two. The first one was Taylor Swift's video. The next one is the fact that today is the six-year anniversary of the day that my episode of The Bachelorette aired on ABC. Now, I know I talk about it a lot, but it was one of the most fun, interesting experiences of my entire life since I'm a reality TV junkie. I flew to Atlantic City, New Jersey. Um, backstory, another role model of mine who's an ally, Pride Month, Judy Ludovico is an executive producer. She was the CEO of Atlantic City and she got me an interview with the producers of The Bachelorette to be a coach since I work in pageants, as you all have heard before. I'm applying all over. Notice the powder's going everywhere. Close my eyes, get it all done. I'll have a tip later for how to make sure no one can tell. Take it into your neck all the way down. Make sure that you're blending it in because you do not want to have a beautiful face and a crazy old neck. Anyways, so I interviewed, got this gig, 
coaching contestants on a group date for The Bachelorette where they were competing for the Mr. America pageant and I was the talent coach six years ago today. That episode aired and from that I got so many friends, followers, connections, amazing experiences and I also got to see what it was like to be in the world of reality. So for future when I'm asking questions on my Instagram, the Christine or on my Facebook, The Christine, or on Twitter, The Christine. I'm happy to take questions about my time on The Bachelorette and my time in The Bachelor Nation because it was an interesting experience. Um, people ask me all the time, are those shows scripted? No, there was no script. I was there. It's very real. The producers and the people involved definitely believe in the process, and I'm proud to say, again, take your um, powder when you're working, work it up into your hairline so that you blend in really well. Can you see now? My face is just nice and clean. Very, very clean. I look fresh, awake, ready, wedding, prom, fraternity party, event, whatever. Ladies, gentlemen, if you're tired of your significant other looking sloppy, sweaty, whatever, and take your powder with you. Put it in your clutch. Put it away. When he starts looking like a hot mess because he's had too many Bud Lights, Pull out your powder, pop it open. Again, when he sees photos later and y'all break up and he wants to use them on his Tumblr account, he'll feel really happy because he looks great. But until then, you look good too, boo. So it's your job to make sure that he's fresh and not looking like a sweaty, hot mess. Especially 20 years down the road when he weighs 60 more pounds and you have to show your kids how cute daddy used to be. So you want to put powder all over and make sure you're all set. And then I give it a few minutes just to sit in and relax. Now the Bachelorette, um, takes a long, long time. The dates are very, very long. I started super early in the morning. Atlantic City, it was a group date. I worked with Miss America, Mallory Hagen Hates, who is fantastic, one of my favorite people, and now one of my favorite political activists. Um, Chris Harrison was lovely. Desiree, amazing. All of the contestants, so, so nice. We did our thing, we filmed. There is no script, there is no rehearsal. Everything happened as it happens. A lot of drinks involved, fun, not for me, I was working, I was professional, but everybody else. Um, so it's very interesting to see the journey happen. They don't call it a process, it's not a process, it's a journey. So you go and see the journey happen. So six years ago today, eight million people, or approximately eight to 13 million, I don't know what it was, saw me on one episode and it kind of changed the trajectory of a lot of things for my life and got me a lot of attention and introduced me to a lot of people and it was an amazing experience. So it also confuses everyone when I say, I was on The Bachelorette. And they're like, I say with a coffin nail in my hand. Yes, I was. So that was my experience and I'm happy to answer any other questions. Again, I'm gonna be opening things up, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, the Christine future topics for us to discuss. I'm happy to go more into detail, but we're going to move on right now. Step three, finish up this makeover. Last step involves a bronzer. Again, I'm not a beauty influencer, so you can use from the drugstore brand all the way, notice the nails, still here, to the most expensive brands. I use a drugstore brand. If you are doing this for your man, this is a Rimmel natural bronzer. Color is sun bronze. Um, and I just take it out, use the exact same brush I use with my powders. I rub it a little bit harder and I only use it on one edge for me. Again, this is what works for me. This might not work for you or anybody else and it might be incorrect technique, but please don't message me like that. Just talk about good things because that's what I want to share. Rub it in. I take it underneath my cheekbone just a little bit here. Take it up and I go all the way up into the hairline and bring it down. Do that one or two times on each side and just make sure that I make it where I have a little bit of like a sun-kissed look, but you wanna leave this part open so that it's like, oh, I'm here. And you want your man to be giving you life. You want that look where the other women are like, what's it about your man that's so fine? And you're like, I don't know. And in your head you're thinking, thank you, Christy. So you do this twice couple times, just get it done. The other thing I do to make it look a little more natural is I take it and I go up into my hairline, a little bit around my hair, especially the temples, and just kind of like blend it in a little bit. Keep that nice and brown. Definitely the cheeks. You can look at it in the light and see. The good thing is you can always take away. And then I take it and go underneath the jawline just a little bit. Pop that jawline some. Make the jawline stick out. Now, if you're a boy and you're going out later, 
especially if you're a gay boy and you want to make a scene, there are things we can do with highlighters. And maybe some other time I'll show you tips for highlighters that I know for girls and boys, the ones that I know about, um, and we'll share and see. But for now, this is just every day you need to look good. Final step. Ladies, or gentlemen who are watching this and who are not going to tell anyone and do it and be really fierce, um, let me get to that in a second. You want to take your fingers and just lick two fingers and go along your eyelashes and pull out to make sure that you don't have any powder and makeup on your eyelashes because that's the first way people can tell. Look, thank you for the lights. I love production giving me lights for days. You just want to go along and make sure that you don't have powder left, and then two, you're ready for the night, boo-boo. Wipe your eyebrows, just make sure you don't have powder left. Now once it's set for a minute, you do your thing. Be careful getting ready, don't get it on your clothes. Keep it cute. Take your brush, make sure it's nice and dusted off. You can rub it on a towel somewhere, make sure it's clean, and just kind of dust over your whole face to knock off any extra powder that's on there, and then your face is ready. And this is what you do when you just want to go out and look cute, it's like face out for your nerves, you just want to look cute and fresh and clean and not look like you're completely done up makeup for your life. Let's talk about a few things. So this drop behind me, this is not my real house, obviously. I wouldn't let you all in there just yet, but I'm gonna have some fun. If you wanna take a picture of your living room, space, bathroom, wherever it is, nothing too crazy, send it to me in high resolution for the next couple of episodes. If this works out and if it keeps going on, I will come live from your living room. Now, plans are for the future. I'm gonna start reaching out to friends. I do have some friends and I don't like to brag. I'm not name dropping, but I know people. I know fun people. I know interesting people. I know amazing, inspiring people. My goal is to start bringing some of them on one by one to meet you all and to bring new things to you. And that's what I want to do. I want to try new things and I want to share with you new things. And I want to talk about old things from my life going from Alabama to New York to Florida and now here in Oregon. This is what it's all about. It's about me and you talking. So I'll put up some stuff. Please follow me on Instagram and Twitter, Christine. You'll see polls there, you'll see questions about how we can share, how we can learn, and how we can grow, and how we do our lives. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I love you all, I hope you're doing great, and I will see you soon. Remember again, it's me, V. Christine, and I'll see you next time.